Cotty. It's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160 and WCCSradio.com. And on this Friday morning, the first Friday of October, we talk with Dr. Margaret Clark, a radiologist at the Indiana Regional Medical Center. Our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mack, voted best personal injury law firm in the best of Indiana County contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. This is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and that will be our topic as we visit with uh, the folks from the Comprehensive Breast Center at the IRMC. Uh, every week this month, and Dr. Clark, you're the first, you're the leadoff hitter. How about that? That sounds good. Thank you for having me. <laughs> uh, well, it's our pleasure. Now, you came to IRMC uh, last year. Correct. And, a little over a year ago, yes. Uh, and, and as a radiologist um, dealing with breast cancer diagnosis, uh, you probably, as much as anybody, uh, have a great perspective on the importance of mammograms. I absolutely do. I, I've been doing breast imaging for many years. In fact, I've been doing breast biopsy since 1995, and I was actually diagnosed with breast cancer in 2010, I, uh, and it was something that was a, a mammogram-only finding. It was not something I could mm. feel. It was completely something that was found on mammogram, so I can't tell you how, how strongly I feel about the importance of mammography. Now, mammo, mammal glam's coming up. We want to talk about that in a couple of minutes. Uh, but uh, mammogram in 2010 when you were diagnosed versus mammogram in 2023 uh, has taken leaps and bounds forward, hasn't it? It absolutely has. In 2010, my initial mammogram was a film screen mammogram. And we've had two upgrades overall across country since then. Um, but fortunately, we had just... Um, we just had some uh, some digital, which improved our mammography quality significantly, and that's where it was really found. But now we have even better technique, which is the 3D mammogram. And certainly IRMC has made a commitment to make sure all women have equal care, so we even have it in uh, northern Cambria now, mm -hmm. as well as our Chestnut Ridge and the hospital sites, too. Yeah, that's three sites for yes. 3D mammography. Absolutely, and that's yeah. just really... It's, it's good care for patients, and it really allows us to see inside the breast to a greater degree than the older types of mammograms. And that outreach into northern Cambria is such a, you know, that's an area that, um, well, they don't have to travel now uh, for a, what is really an essential service for women. Absolutely it is. And we even have, um, we're going to have surgeons up there as well just to increase access to care. It's, it's hard. Everybody has busy lives or doing things, and this will allow them to spend less time on the road and more time taking care of themselves. All right, so let's get to the basics of mammogram. Sure. Um, who should be getting a mammogram and how frequently? Uh, that's always a controversial topic. There's been a lot of um, debate over the years, but uh, starting yearly at age 40 and continuing on. I so often speak with some older patients who say to me, oh, you know, I don't really think I need to have a mammogram. My doctor is not sure if I have to have a mammogram because I'm 75. And I just tell them I strongly disagree with that. The reason I disagree is there's no cutoff for when cancer develops. And if we can find it small and early, it's much easier to treat than when it's large and late. So I don't think there should be any ceiling on mammography across the country. Most people don't think there should be a ceiling on mammography either. Um, the 40 to 49 age group has always been a little controversial, uh, but most societies recommend starting at age 40. Now, certainly there are some people who need to start screening earlier, and that has to do with their family history, any genetic predisposition to developing breast cancer early. That's, that's a little bit different as far as recommendations, and that's, it's a very individual kind of thing. For people in that uh, instance, um, are we talking, okay, I know that my family has a history of it, therefore I should go through genetic testing, or is there some other way that we should determine whether genetic testing is called for? Uh, genetic testing isn't just, oh, I have a family history. There's, And it's not just a, you know, if I have two relatives, that increases my risk. There's a, there's a protocol. Usually most people use something called a tyrocusic model, and um, the, the gynecologists, the primary care doctors have access to that on the Internet, and you um, can plug in your information to determine your risk. Mm -hmm. um, people who are um, – and then that determines your eligibility for genetic testing. Um, but so it's not just – the only other recommendation that's fairly straightforward is that if you have a first-degree relative, which means mother, sister, daughter – with premenopausal breast cancer, 
you begin screening 10 years before that age of diagnosis. So, for example, if you have a mother who is diagnosed at age 42, you should start screening at age 32. And that's even with the American Cancer Society. That's the current recommendations. Mm-hmm. You know, things always change, but those are the current recommendations at the moment. All right. So, so those are reasons to get a mammogram. Why do people object to getting a mammogram? What are the, the obstacles that you encounter? Well, one obstacle is that it's uncomfortable. Um, but then we go back to the differences in mammography. Back when we had early film screen mammography, you the technician the technologist took a picture, did the mammogram, and then had to walk around the the unit and go and release compression. One good thing is is that now there's an automatic release. So as soon as the image is obtained, it automatically releases. So it's just a very very short amount of time um, mm-hmm. of discomfort for the overall benefit of finding something early. Um, sometimes people think, oh, you know, they forget about it. Life gets busy. You forget to to go and call your and schedule your mammogram. The great thing is, is we've restarted Mammo Mondays, and so you can just walk in and get a mammogram. And that was that was instituted before COVID. Um, we, you know, took a break from that during COVID, but now it's back again. Yeah. And the great thing is, is you also don't need a prescription. You don't have to go to your doctor to get a prescription for a mammogram. You can just walk in and get a screening mammogram. Diagnostics a little bit different, but if you're out and about on a Monday, you're out at Walmart and just stop by IRMC and you can get a screening mammogram. Yeah, yeah. Memo Mondays are available only at the Women's Imaging Center at the main campus here in Indiana, uh, so folks need to know that. Uh, but Memo Glam uh, is actually going to give you an added opportunity for sort of an extended Memo Monday on October the 23rd. That's correct. And what we're going to do is all of us from the um, from the breast cancer team will be there. And it's going to be kind of a meet and greet kind of thing. Um, allow anybody who wants to to come in and have a conversation, a one-on-one conversation with us. And then there's going to be a lot of fun things as well. Um, we'll be having some appetizers and some mocktails. Uh, massages will be available, uh, makeup. and But you can also schedule a mammogram too if you don't want to just walk in on a Monday. You can schedule a mammogram, too, and we just want to make make access as available as we can for our patients. Yeah, that will be on Monday, October 23rd. It's called Mammo Glam, and uh, ladies, if you'd like to go, 724-357-7188. You can make your reservation, and everybody who goes uh, will also be entered for a drawing to win a KitchenAid stand mixer. Nice. Um, but uh, even folks uh, who aren't due or eligible for a mammogram, they ought to consider going to this, too. Oh, they absolutely can. It just gives them a, a question or a, an opportunity to have some one-on-one conversations with us, get more information, things that they might not think of asking at another time, and and yeah, just we're we're making ourselves available so they can ask us any questions that they want, anything that we can do to be helpful. As a radiologist, when you get the results from the mammograms uh, that have been held, um, you then analyze those and determine if uh, there's another step that needs to be taken. Is is uh, what you find on that mammogram automatically breast cancer, or are there other steps to go through to determine exactly what you're dealing with? Um, no, that's an excellent point. And it's, it's when we read a screening mammogram, we are looking for anything that might be different compared to prior mammograms or any kind of concerning kind of finding. But just because we see something that might look different doesn't automatically mean that it's bad. And it's you know, we, we see patients every day just because they get called back for some additional imaging, such as some extra views or even an ultrasound. It's, it's a very stressful thing. We, we completely understand that. But many cases, it's a matter of being cautious and careful with a woman's health. Uh, sometimes it's something as, as easy as a, as a simple cyst. We see a round ball in the mammogram. On the mammogram, it's a white round ball. And we can't tell on, on a mammogram whether it's a solid mass or just a cyst, which is a nice benign water-filled balloon. Mm -hmm. And then, so we call the patients back for an ultrasound, and that often answers the question. If it's a nice, simple cyst, then we can say, see you next year, which is a good thing. So it's not always a bad thing to get called back. I certainly understand it's very stressful for our patients. And it's part of the whole idea of having a comprehensive breast center team at IRMC, of which you are Mm -hmm. a member. Um, uh, Your particular position didn't exist. Uh, until you came along uh, and, and joined the team. Uh, other radiologists who weren't specializing in breast cancer were, were doing the function that you're doing now. Um, that's correct. And I've, for many, many years, even before my, my own diagnosis, 
Um, I was very centered on, on mammography and breast imaging, which also includes breast ultrasound, breast MRI, and then image-guided biopsies. In other words, stereotactic biopsies, ultrasound-guided biopsies, and MRI-guided biopsy. And it's something that I, I have a passion for, and I would say probably since 2010 I have even more of a passion for it and um, trying to help my patients. Yeah, yeah. So women, they need to do this. They absolutely need to do it. Yeah, let's, let's get them there. Memo Glam, 724-357-7188, if you'd like to get uh, registered for that. If you just want to walk in on Mondays, that's great. And by appointment at uh, Chestnut Ridge and also at Northern Cambria, correct? Correct. Wonderful. Hey, thank you so much for coming in to visit with us. Oh, thank you very much for having me. It's good to have you with us. You kick off the entire month of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, don't forget as well, ladies, that the uh, the 5K, the Love of Life 5K is coming up later this month, too. We'll be talking with the folks from that and with others from the Comprehensive Breast Center team at IRMC as this month goes along. It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160, WCCSradio.com. I am Gregory Olson, a retired Indiana County judge. I am supporting Anthony Satil, a candidate for district judge in Indiana Borough and White Township. So, Judge, you are supporting Tony Satil. I am. I have no.